How's it going everyone? Kellen Reck here, and today we're gonna talk about ISO, something that's got the power to make your footage look super clean and also super grainy. So ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. It's the sensor gain of your camera. So what exactly does this mean? Well, the higher your ISO, the less light you're gonna need to get a properly exposed image. Now there's a trade-off to this. We can't just crank our ISO up in dark places because the higher our ISO, the grainier our footage is. So just as an overview, the higher your ISO, the more light that your sensor's taking in and the brighter your exposure could theoretically be here. Now, the lower our ISO, the less light, less sensitive our sensor is. So theoretically, our exposures will be a little darker. We'll need to have a longer shutter speed, a more open aperture. Now, again, the trade-off is that the lower our ISO, the less grainy our footage actually looks, and the higher our ISO, the more grainy our footage looks. So that's an overview on ISO. So why would you even wanna to touch ISO? Why would you wanna adjust it? Well, the real artistic reason behind it is that it's gonna allow you to dial in and target specific apertures and shutter speeds in your photos and videos. So let's say you're shooting aperture F 2.8 and you got a shutter speed of one over 50 and your ISO is at 200. Well, you wanna get a faster shutter speed. You're shooting some action and you want to really slow down that action and get a nice crisp frame. Well, you're gonna need a faster shutter speed, but you're already at proper exposure. What you can do is increase your ISO, bringing your exposure up, and then you can speed up your shutter speed to bring that exposure back down to the perfect level that you want. So you can use the ISO to manipulate your aperture and shutter speed to get exactly the look that you want. So now that we know what ISO is and why you might wanna use it, is there a best ISO for the best look for your camera? Well, if we look at Canon DSLRs, so a Canon 80D, for example, or a 5D Mark IV, what is the best ISO to use? Well, with any camera, you want to aim for the lowest native ISO. Now, what's a native ISO? Well, that's the, cam that's the ISO that is basically best built for your camera. So in the case of a Canon C100, before we get into the DSLRs, the C100 native ISO is 850. And you'll know this because when you're toggling through the ISO options and you hit 850, there's a set of brackets around it. And this lets you know that that's the native ISO of that camera. That's where it's gonna look the best with the least noise and the best dynamic range. So when I'm using a C100, I'm almost always shooting at ISO 850. If we go back to the DSLRs, there's a native ISO scale. So you've got ISO 100, 200, 400, 800. It doubles each time and each of those changes in ISO is one stop of light. So ISO 100, one stop darker than ISO 200. So these native ISOs, again, the lowest native ISO is what you wanna aim for. So ideally when you're shooting with a Canon DSLR, you wanna aim for ISO 100, 200. Once you start to get higher than that, again, the noise and grain is gonna to start to pick up in your footage. Something to know though, with these Canon DSLRs, those that native ISO scale there, the 100, 200, et cetera, isn't the only numbers that you're gonna to have to choose for your ISO. With Canon DSLR cameras and a lot of other DSLRs, you have one third stop increments that you can choose from for your ISO. So you'll see 100, 160, 200, 250. These additional numbers are essentially digitally enhanced options of the native ISO scale. So if you're shooting at 160, what the camera's doing is shooting at ISO 200 and then reducing the brightness of your image by one third of a stop to get you down to ISO 160. This, in a lot of cases, a lot of people will say shooting at ISO 160 or 320, these minus one third stop shots, will give you less noise because you're basically taking that native ISO, which has minimal noise, and then reducing it by a third of a stop, so darkening it, so you can't even really see a lot of the noise in the dark places. A lot of people argue that shooting at ISO 160 or 320, etc., is gonna give you that best 
least noise look, but you're losing some dynamic range there because you're reducing digitally the brightness of your shot. The other numbers like ISO 250 are taking an ISO, a native ISO of 200 and boosting the brightness by one third of a stop. So these shots, the ISO 250, ISO 500, I would stay away from those boosted ISOs because you're gonna really just lose a ton of dynamic range. You're gonna get a lot more noise in these shots. So my overall advice to you, if you have to pick the right ISO for your Canon DSLR or any DSLR you're using, stick with those native ISO numbers and aim for the lowest possible one you can get. It's gonna give you the least noise, best dynamic range. It's gonna give you the best look for your footage. So I'm hoping that this overview on ISO is helpful for you. I want you to understand what it is, how you use it, and what the best options for you when you're going out to shoot. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, write a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, go ahead and subscribe, ring the little bell so you can see every time I post. I post Wednesdays at 10 a.m. with the goal of helping you become a better photographer, better filmmaker. So thanks again for watching. We'll check you back in the next one.